Hey everybody, final thoughts time for PAX Premier 2nd Edition. And oh boy, this is a game. Uh, first off, I want to thank Whirly Geek for sending us uh, this copy and uh, the nice little metal coins, which are a fun little add-on. But this game is so much more than I thought it was going to be. And now, it's not that I thought it was going to be a very simple game, but it's got a small board. It's, you know, you got, uh, you're just playing cards and it's a little tableau builder. But the complexity in this game is... It's impressive how, how much they can pack into this small package. And and I, I want to say that in a good way. I think that the complexity here is not overdone. It is exactly what it should be for this. It, it's It's got a ton of these interconnected systems. Like, I mean, as you saw in the, uh, in the playthrough, um, I play a card that puts down a token on a place that putting that token down in a region that gets makes me the ruler of the region. Now that I'm the ruler of the region, if someone else wants to play a card from that region, they have to pay me. Um, or uh, I've played a card that makes that means I need to put coins down in these specific positions. Those coins might add up. Uh, eventually, I'll you know get all that money, and that the all of the money is 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 a closed economic system. There's so much here that honestly, it was a little difficult to learn. It was diff difficult to learn and to teach. But once we had that all down, I, I found myself really enjoying this game. Um, I will say that, uh, so I was playing a two player game and I think this game's sweet spot is three, maybe four players, maybe even five. I haven't, I haven't been able to play it with five, but it's difficult to do so right now. But uh, I think that that's where the, the sweet spot is. Um, now, if you're playing two-player, there is also an AI uh, opponent that you can add to make a three-player game or to play it solo. I was considering doing that, but it would kind of add too much like cards and, and stuff to the board, so it would be a little bit hard to follow. And it also changes the game a fair amount. I liked it a lot, but I'd say the solo mode is a different experience. But going back to uh, the main game, uh, I was really impressed. Um, I, I liked how everything fit together nothing fell out of place everything felt like it made sense even though there was a lot to keep track of i really felt that doing so was valuable um none of this stuff was tacked on it, it really felt that like every bit of complexity that was involved uh was was there for a reason now there's a lot to this game so much so that like i couldn't even show you everything that i wanted to show you in the run through uh, i wasn't able to to go over um for example, like cards with uh, gifts. I wasn't able to, to do that in the run through because just didn't really get around to it. Uh, there's bribery. Um, we also didn't change the, the favored suit, um, mainly because the, the cards just didn't happen to show up that, that changed the suit around, but that, that can really affect uh, how the pace of the game uh, works because when it starts off, this game is kind of slow and methodical. You have basic actions you can uh, draw a card or you can buy a card or you can play a card um, but as your tableau builds especially if you can build it with an eye towards what the favorite suit is you eventually can have these monstrous turns where let's say I had you know three purple cards and purple is the favorite suit so I, I you know play a card but then I can trigger three different like free actions on top of the two that I already have so you end up with these turns that are really big plays and it can hurt when you're not the one making those plays i will say that this game is, is very competitive um there's a lot of opportunity for backstabbing if that's if that doesn't sit well with you this game is gonna rub you the wrong way a little bit because you have so many opportunities to sneak in destroy other players cards uh sometimes causing a cascade which destroys their pieces on the board there's a lot of potential there for for <laughs> ruining people's plans and not everyone's going to get along with that. Um, I don't go in for games like that too often, but sometimes you're in the mood, and I think it. I think that this game works really well for that. The game, the last game that I played, a three-player game, it was interesting because I was playing. At, I was started off loyal to the British, and the other two were loyal to uh, the Russians, and starting off the game with with it was two against one. I was at a bit of a disadvantage, but then after the first dominance check. Uh, one of the Russian players switched sides to the British side. And at first I'm thinking, oh, that's good because you're helping me put pieces on the board, but now I have to think about a completely different way that I need to stay ahead of you. Because before, all I was worried about was making sure 
British had as much as or close to as much uh, pieces on the board as Russia. But then they were dominant, all the, the pieces got wiped, and now we're starting afresh. And now I think, oh, now I need to make sure I'm more influential. And I wasn't able to pull that off. Uh, the, the switching of factions is so slippery in, in such a good way. I, I really, really enjoyed that about it. And, and I think that's what's going to keep this game fresh is, is, so you're not playing with every card. Like if you're playing a three player game, you're using maybe half of the cards in the game. Um, so the cards that are showing up are just going to be different, which means that some factions are going to have more patriots and whatnot than others. Um, so some factions might just be stronger than others. And seeing which uh, faction is the right horse to back is, I think, a huge part of this game. Um, so if you if you like that uh, that bit of, uh, of analysis in games where you need to like assess the board state and see a few moves ahead to know which way the tides are turning and then react to that, uh, maybe get ahead of it, uh, then you're going to find a lot to like here. Um, I also want to say that um, while I don't think I am qualified to speak to the cultural nature of this game, this is talking about uh, a people that I don't have any experience with, it does seem like a lot of care was taken to represent these people in a very non-stereotypical and historically accurate way. Um, uh, if you look at the, the rule book, there is a long section on the back that talks about all of the the research that was done to make this as uh, accurate and sensitive to uh, the people as possible, because this is representing a real uh, a real event that uh, continues to affect people's lives today. And I think that it's good when a game acknowledges that and treats it with respect. Um, again, I'm not fully qualified to say, to give it a stamp of approval in that sense, but I did appreciate the level of um, care that seemed to be taken. Uh, in it. Um, so, Pax Premier, I definitely am going to keep playing this game. I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a lot packed into a, a tight package, um, and I, I personally recommend it. I don't think it's going to be for everybody. It is very, very cutthroat at times. You don't have to play that way, but it kind of encourages it in, in certain circumstances. But if you don't mind that, or if you like that, I think you're gonna you're gonna find a lot to like in Pax Premier. So uh, those are my final thoughts for Pax Premier, and I will see you next time. Bye bye, folks.